Now that we got a bunch of other stuff out of the way, I think I'm going to start cleaning off the top of this intake as far as removing some of these hoses that I don't know if are going to be reused. Mainly like this guy because this goes to the factory brake booster, which I'm not even running a brake booster on this. Uh, yeah, we'll take that off and kind of clean this up and get it ready for the wiring harness and also ready for me to work on the back. I already took off... Uh, these IMRCs, yeah, IMRCs off the back, and then we need a plate for that in order to make them not move anymore. I'll be grabbing that tomorrow. Off camera, I went ahead and I put the starter in. I obviously have this bolt missing because I have the wrong bolts in here. I reused the clutch bolts in order to just get it in place, and then I can swap the bolts with this kind of hung up later. I did have to take this exhaust pipe out, the one that wraps around, the one that's the slotted one on the passenger side, so I had to take that out to get the starter in. Now, according to Cook's website, you want to use this starter here. Um, it's the one listed on their website. But this one was bigger than the factory GT starter that came with my car. So I'm just going to reuse the one that came with it. And I'll return this. Also, while I was underneath here, I put the rest of the bell housing bolts in. Or the transmission bolts in. Including these two little guys down here. The only ones I don't have are the top two. I don't even know how I'm going to get to them though. Maybe when I take the intake manifold off, I could sneak down in there. So I had the intake manifold on and I started running the uh, engine harness. The reason why I took it back off is because pigtails like this, especially like, uh, especially like that guy down there by my middle finger here, are almost, if not impossible to get to with the intake manifold on when it's inside of this. Maybe in an S550, where this motor is supposed to be, it's a little bit easier, but there's just no room underneath there. So I took it back off, and I'll show you where I started and how everything's plugged in once I get that far. All right, so I got the engine harness kind of wrapped around everything. I'm just going to quickly show you how I routed it. Uh, the first place that I started is down with these two sensors off of the oil pump. It works its way up. And honestly, it's actually pretty simple. More or less, you can't mess it up. Probably less than more. I don't know. Um, all of these plugs are for the fuel injectors on the intake manifold. But like I pointed out earlier, for the plugs back here, you're going to want to make sure that the intake is off. It, at least if you're doing this on a Fox Body Mustang. I put this ground on here on the motor. Going to want to make sure that you ground it up. And then it kind of just all wraps around. Got this sensor, this guy down here, all these little bits and things and whatever. Uh, this is just loose right now, and I'm probably going to end up moving where that plugs into or hiding it somehow, down the road stuff. Either way, this is how it sits right now, and I'm going to go ahead and throw the intake manifold on. So I got the intake manifold off here. Um, these guys, the CVCM and uh, what are they? And the IMRCs on this car, I went ahead and removed them. I don't think I need to show that, but I can show you exactly what they do here. With them removed, you have these guys that move on both sides, right? And if you look inside of one of the intake runners, you can see when it's closed, it closes off a bunch and opens up. The point of that is to increase torque at low end and help with drivability. I'd like to keep it, except for these guys hit the firewall um, with the motor mounts and everything that I have. Personally, I'd rather have the better weight distribution by keeping the motor as far back as possible than having this on. Um, but for the most part on Gen 3 Coyotes, I would say just keep them. Or Coyotes in general, they're, they're good. They're good, but I'm just not for my application. So I went to UPR and I got these. You pretty much just take the screws off that hold uh, these guys in place. And then you put these in their place with them locked in the open position. So not that, but like that. And then now they aren't in the way anymore. Right here is the source, the vacuum source for that whole setup over there. I went ahead and just put one of these guys on it just to cap that off. I've had these little plugs for God knows how long, but you know, whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, I may use that for something later. I went ahead and I got all the injectors plugged in. I'm not sure exactly what this is for, but I'll figure that out in a moment, not a big deal. Got this, I'm pretty sure that is the fuel pressure sensor uh, for the rail. Plug that in. I have to connect the hose here, my AN line here. And then I put this line on. I just wanna make a quick note about this. Uh, 
Um, the 90 degree has to go off of the fuel rail because this has a check valve inside of it. And if you don't have it this way, you aren't gonna get any fuel to the bottom half and the motor's not gonna turn over and all that jazz. So just make sure that you do that side right. Almost forgot this guy. Got to plug in the uh, throttle body, of course, do that. Just like that. Cool. Um, we're getting pretty dang close. I did remove these studs here, uh, all those, and those studs are for something or other. I just removed them. I still have them. I can put them on later. Obviously, I'm going to have a few things like these guys here, which don't get plugged back in, but starting to look like an engine. I think the next step for me is going to be going up and getting my actual control pack, the engine control pack, and seeing how all that gets wired into this. I don't remember exactly what I showed, but um, in case I forgot, this hose goes over to here on the intake. This goes over to here on the intake manifold. Um, this is supposed to go to this, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm not going to be doing that right now. It's just a vacuum, so I'm going to probably just plug this guy and this guy, uh, but I need to go get the plugs. And then, yeah, so that's that's kind of that. Got a bunch of stuff laid out here. Here's the basic rundown. I connected the MAF sensor here. Um, these other connectors go to, this is for an intercooler pump or something like that. I'm not going to need it, but we'll keep the pigtail, to be honest. This is for ambient air temperature. I don't have a sensor for that right now. This goes to the alternator. I don't have an alternator right now. So all that's leaving or staying undone. Um, I connected it to the PCM and then I also connected this, which goes is the uh, transmission harness to the engine harness, which is where all this stuff comes from. Um, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to route this stuff. The This wire right here is for a fan, an auxiliary fan. I don't have a fan. This goes down to the starter, but I haven't gotten down to that yet. Um, don't know what these are exactly for at this current moment. I have the fuse box just kind of set up there for now. I did run it through the firewall. Just It's not even like actually in there, it's just for the sake of getting it out of the way. I got my fuse box up here. I'm going to figure out where to ground it out a little bit later. And then I did connect the pedal and I also connected the clutch sensor, the, the clutch pedal sensor. So those are all also plugged in. Um, this right here is the transmission harness, which is great, fine and dandy, except for I don't even see how this is going to be long enough to run down to the O2 sensors. With it being the manual, there's not a lot of connectors on it, and this doesn't plug into the connectors that are there. So for starting it, it's not a big deal. You know, it's kind of the whole thing. We're just trying to get this thing turned over. Uh, next thing I'm going to figure out is, I guess, how to wire in the fuel pump. I connected this wire back here. This is the green wire that comes from the three pin plug on mine. I'm going to end up grounding it to right there. If we come up here, I got the UPR battery relocation kit, mainly for the cable right now, because I don't know exactly where I'm mounting the box at, and I know I'm gonna get the kit. This goes directly to the um, starter, and then my negative, I just have it grounded out right here. Again, it's a temporary setup. I have one wire that goes to this, which is the PCM on, and then the other wire, and then this right here should be my starter request, which I'm just going to touch to the positive terminal. I also have a positive wire going straight to the fuse box here because I don't have an alternator and the alternator is what provides that power to my understanding. Um, I got vacuum here going to that for the fuel pressure regulator. Not that it should matter too much for the short run that I'm doing, but whatever. Um, <coughs> O2 sensors. Even if they aren't in, just plug them in, is what I was told. Um, that ground goes straight back to the negative on the battery. The uh, motor currently is grounded out. The motor currently is grounded out to right here into there. The biggest thing is just making sure that you have the motor 
and the chassis grounded pretty well and obviously all the wiring right so if i did this all right it should work um but before i go ahead and start it i'm going to disconnect my crank positioning sensor and turn it over since i have i added motor oil obviously um since i have oil in here and this motor hasn't started in a very long time i just want it to build some pressure get the oil to the top of it before it actually starts revving up to a thousand rpm what that's also going to do is allow me to make sure that my fuel rail is getting pressure and i'll be able to hear my uh the flutter of my throttle body so we'll uh go ahead and start i guess we'll connect the battery and pray it's kind of right Put one of those on and then this little uh, zip tie around it just to make sure that it doesn't pop off. Fuck. 